Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to show in this video how to use Blue Sky Plan for an implant that may not necessarily be um, listed in the Blue Sky software. So one of the most common questions I get is, uh, hey, I use such and such implant. Um, it's not listed in the software. How do I go about making a surgical guide using their drills or their guided surgery kit? And so the first answer to the question is, you might want to just first check because many of the implants have been added to Blue Sky Plan. Most of the larger name implants are there. So right here I've gone to add implant. You can see it defaults to Blue Sky Bio, but if I click on this drop down menu, there's a lot of different systems that are present here. We could go with any number of these. Let's just take Nobel for example. Um, if we stick in Nobel, uh, we've got the different uh, settings available. So if you're doing a Nobel Active and you want to use their surgical kit, this is going to make everything default to the correct settings. But what do you do if you're using uh, an implant that maybe is not as common and is simply not available in there? Well, what we could do is we could maybe just say a custom implant. So let's make a 10 millimeter long implant. Let's say that the apical diameter is four millimeters, the coronal diameter or the clusal is five and let's place this into our case. And so I place the implant, we can quickly position this, get it where it's in the ideal prosthetic position. Uh, look at it obviously from all angles, make sure that everything is lining up where it should be. And so now we've got our implant in position. However, because this is a um, custom implant, we're gonna now have to define what guided surgery kit we wanna use. So the first thing I should clarify is that not all guided kits are created equal. Um, the, the body doesn't know whose drill made the hole that you've created in the bone, and it doesn't know whose titanium implant you're sticking into that hole. So there's some great implants on the market that have really crappy kits, in my opinion. Um, and you know, then there's other uh, systems that have a great kit and maybe poor implants. My point is you don't necessarily have to keep those consistent. As long as the hole is the appropriate size, then you're, you're all good. You know, I, I helped in designing the Blue Sky Bio fully guided keyless kit. Thus, I think it's pretty darn good and it's about as easy as it gets. So I could simply uh, select maybe a, a Blue Sky Biomax, trick the software, tell it that it's a, a Biomax implant of a similar size, and then just have everything auto default and it, it work for it. But let's say perhaps you're a lab, you don't have that option necessarily, and you're planning for a customer that really wants it to be with their particular kit. So there's a few things that you're gonna have to figure out um, on the front end. And that is one, it, what type of kit is it? Is it a keyless kit? Or is it a kit that has the keys and spoons um, that the drills go into? Are you gonna use a metal guide sleeve? Um, you know, if it's a keyed kit, there's really not much of a need for using a metal guide sleeve, right? Because the, the, the metal spoon or key is going to be what interfaces with the drill. Thus, we don't have to worry about generating plastic shavings. Uh, is it something like the Blue Sky Fully Guided Keyless Kit where there's no cutting portion of the drill that ever comes in contact with this plastic guide sleeve? Thus, you could maybe skip the tube and just make this where it uh, matches to the diameter of the built-in key. So I'm, I'm just going to make some numbers up here. Let's suppose that your, your system that you have to make the guide for um, does use spoons and you're going to do this without a metal guide sleeve and that the outer diameter of that spoon measures five millimeters. Again, just making numbers up. So you're going to have to now size this appropriately to that. So first thing that you need to realize is that this gold um, guide tube that we call it in the software, that represents not a metal guide tube, but this represents the plastic that will uh, get 3D printed into which you would stick a metal guide tube or a sleeve or whatever. So if we wanted to go tubeless in this case, um, and we know that the outer diameter of the keys that we're gonna use measure five millimeters, then in my experience, the uh, best fit typically is when I make the inner diameter of this hole into which you're gonna stick it uh, be about 0.2, sometimes 0.1 to 0.3. It varies depending on the printer, and you may have to play with it and dial it in for your printer. But on my printer, I like it to be 0.2 larger. So 
If you want to manually control these numbers, make sure first of all that you're in surgical guide mode and that you're in advanced mode because that's going to give you manual control over all of these numbers down here. So we go down to our guide tube um, settings and we can simply look at this. It'll default to some number, but again, you can change that to whatever you want. So remember I, I said that the outer diameter of the keys for this kit that I'm planning with is five. So I'm going to make the guide hole diameter or the inner diameter of the plastic sleeve be 5.2. Okay, so change this to 5.2 and it'll give you a little warning just basically saying hey you're 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 driving this thing manually now so make sure you know what you're doing the height okay so the height of the guide sleeve um, really is just dependent on what you're sticking into it typically four is fine um, you'll see what it does if I change this to something like six watch this height of this right here it simply will keep the the coronal position of the platform the same and just vary the height of this but you know if you're let's say the keys that you're using um, if they only have a vertical height of three then there's not much point in going larger than three uh, so let's again just pretend in this case that we're going to go with four millimeters on the uh, the height of the tube now the other one that's probably the most difficult to figure out is the offset and offsets are particular to the system that's being used but let's define first of all what is the offset offset is defined as the distance from the top of the implant here to the top of the guide tube so for example with the blue sky bio fully guided keyless kit that is a, a measurement of eight and a half millimeters that is the height of that built-in key from where it goes to the stopper down to the cutting portion of the drill so we would simply set this to match up with that so let's uh, let's say though that this is not a keyed kit let's say that this is a, a system where maybe the drill has a built-in stop on it and that stop comes in contact with the key okay now first of all we need to think about what is the um, the thickness of the key itself right so um, the key on many of these systems is going to have one millimeter of thickness and thus when you drop the key into this plastic guide sleeve again is what we're talking about right here it's going to add one millimeter of vertical height all right so you need to consider that so i'm going to recommend that when you're trying to figure out offset go back to your standard view and enlarge this uh, tangential view the reason this is useful is the tangential view is going to center itself on the implant and thus you're going to be seeing a cut um, in the in the slices that is straight through this implant and that's useful because now we can do some measuring and we can backtrack on this I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment so again with this hypothetical kit we've already set our guide hole diameter we've set the height now the offset you might have to just measure this you might have to look at the manufacturers recommendations of what the offset needs to be set at let's say that I measure this and that the drill I need to use measures 23 millimeters from the stop that's on it to the apical end of the drill okay so that means that I want that stopper to bottom out right here in this case on the top of the key and the apical end of the drill be right here okay so remember that there is going to be um, 23 millimeters of total height so what I do when I'm trying to reverse engineer a kit is I use the measuring tool I come to the bottom of the implant the virtual position in this tangential view click right in the center and now I'm going to stretch this up until it is at 23 all right so if I was doing a um, something that didn't have a key and was going straight to the tube I would go to right here remember though in this case that we're gonna say that our built-in key has a, a vertical height of one millimeter thus I really only need to push this plastic tube up to the 22 millimeter position right so now I've done that I can see where 22 millimeters is in position 
And now it's very easy to just simply take this offset and not have to do a bunch of math and worry about, um, you know, trying to subtract and find out the exact number. I can rather just start increasing this. I'm going up in increments of one millimeter and boom, there we are. Now the height of this guide tube is exactly 22 millimeters from the apex of the implant. And if we went one more millimeter with the built-in or with the key that we're going to insert into it, that gives me a total drilling depth of 23 millimeters. Thus, that 23 millimeter drill that I mentioned that we're using in this case, when I stick it through this uh, surgical guide and it bottoms out, the apex of the drill should be right here at the apex of my planned implant. So it's not that difficult to, to reverse engineer these cases. You just, first of all, have to know what the parameters of the kit that you're using are and then be able to work backwards from that. Okay, so now let's, let's look at a different scenario. Let's suppose that we're not using a keyed system. Let's say that we, uh, we just have a 2.2 millimeter drill. Uh, you, you love the starter drill in your, in your kit that you use currently. It's a 2.2 millimeter diameter and it's parallel walled. That means that it could be matched up to a surgical guide sleeve. Um, and you just want to make pilot hole guides. Okay, so let's reverse engineer that process. Um, let's, all, let's first off start with the length of the drill. So suppose with me that the, um, the length of the drill that you intend to use in this case measures 22 millimeters. Okay, so remember how we did this. We're going to take the measuring tool right here. We're going to measure from the apex of the implant up 22 millimeters or whatever that number is, which in this case that let's make up a different number. <laughs> let's go with 19 just so that it's different from what I've got here. So I just measured up 19 millimeters. Okay, I can turn the measuring tool off now and let's say that this time we're going to need to use a metal guide sleeve because you can't have a cutting portion of a drill uh, in direct contact with plastic because it's going to generate shavings and get in your osteotomy. Okay, so does the manufacturer for your system make their own guide tubes? If so, what is the outer diameter of that sleeve? Um, if it was 3.5 millimeters, then remember what we would do with the guide hole diameter is we would add 0.2 or 0.3 or 0.1, again, a printer dependent. Uh, let's say we're adding 0.2. So if it was three and a half, then I would make the internal diameter of the plastic sleeve now be 3.7. So much smaller in diameter. That means that when I take that 3.5 millimeter outer diameter pla uh, metal tube, it will insert in here, have a nice press fit and be nice and tight. And now you don't have to worry about generating metal shavings. Um, so let's say that that was the manufacturer's tube, okay? Alternatively, what if we don't have um, manufacturer tube sizes? What if you're going to have to go and source your own? Well, luckily for you, Blue Sky Bio has a pretty exhaustive list of um, surgical guide tube sleeves. So what I'm going to do here is go to the Blue Sky Bio website and I can go down here to where you see guide tubes and we can go to all guide tubes. Now Blue Sky, last I checked, we have I think the largest selection of surgical guide tubes out there and so you ought to be able to find um, the tube that's appropriate for whatever you're wanting to do. So remember I've got a 2.2 millimeter drill so what should the inner diameter of that metal guide tube be? Well in my experience about 0.1 larger seems to be the right amount. You start getting less than that and it's too tight of a fit. One, it's difficult to get in, and two, you tend to generate metal shavings. Um, point one larger seems to be a nice tight fit that still lets your drill uh, rotate freely uh, without generating heat and metal shavings and all, but still not be so loose that you have deviation within that. So I'm going to look for a guide tube that has a 2.3 inner diameter to match up with my 2.2 millimeter drill. Okay, so we actually have several options here. All of these options that you see right here have 2.3 millimeter inner diameter. And you can see all of these settings on the drills. 
Well, if this was a really skinny site and I wanted to make sure that my overall uh, tube is taking up the least space possible, then I'd probably want to get one that has an outer diameter as small as possible. Okay, so in this case, if I order this tube, uh, the outer diameter of it is three millimeters. Okay, so we're going to order that tube. This is what we're going to use. So when I come back to my case now, Remember, I've, I've made note that the outer diameter of that tube is 3.0. Thus, what would I make the uh, inner diameter of this? Remember, this gold thing is the plastic into which you will insert that. So I've already forgotten what that number was. Uh, 3.0, outer diameter. So the inner diameter of the hole, I'm going to make 3.2. Okay, now that size is down and we've got a hole that's going to uh, accept this uh, metal sleeve from Blue Sky Bio. Okay, now let's look at some of the other parameters on this tube. It has a one millimeter lip, all right, and its height is five millimeters. Okay, so if I go back again to the Blue Sky software, what should my height be? I simply make it match up with um, whatever it is on the... Um, the sleeve. Actually, really, there's going to be one millimeter of that sticking out because one millimeter of its total height is just the lip. So let's make it four. And then the offset. Again, you can do a bunch of math and you can figure out the offset right here. Or alternatively, remember we said that if, uh, if this drill that we're wanting to use measures 19 millimeters in length and that's where you're going to bottom out, then that's essentially where we want to put the top of this. Now remember, your guide tube is going to have one millimeter of lip height. That means there's going to be one millimeter of metal sticking up above this. So what I'll do is just take away one. Let's change this now to 18. And I'm just going to delete this one, remove. Let's change this now to 18. right there. That is where I want now the top of my guide sleeve. So I can reduce this by quite a bit here. Uh, and I nailed it right there. So when I reduce the number down now, uh, and you can just do this by trial and error and watch this tube go down until the top of it coincides. Okay, so now I've got 18 millimeters from apex of the implant to the top of the plastic and then when I insert the metal tube, it's going to add one more millimeter of vertical height with the lip of that tube, putting me at a total of 19 millimeters. So again, it's just another way of reverse engineering um, a particular um, tube, or uh, I'm sorry, a particular drill or surgical guide kit. You just need to know the parameters of that. If you're going to use a surgical guide tube, you need to know the parameters of the surgical guide tube. And again, uh, Blue Sky Bio does have a really, really exhaustive, large uh, variety of these tubes. We have these that fit into Nobel uh, keys. We have these that fit into the CERAC um, holes, if you're into using the CERAC guides. And these things go from a diameter of a really large inter internal diameter of 6.7 all the way down to our smallest tube is 1.2 millimeters in diameter. So a super, super small pilot hole. But again, this is uh, hopefully going to help you if you have to reverse engineer a kit that you're not familiar with. If it is a kit that uh, is you know, something that uh, a manufacturer has developed, then you ought to be able to get from them what the settings should be, what the parameters are of their kit. Otherwise, you're just going to have to measure those manually. So hopefully you find that helpful and can use this to um, reverse engineer kits you're not familiar with.